Hey folks, welcome back to another Dice Tower Preview. I'm Mark, and today we're taking a look at Valerius, which is brought to you by Boss Dog Games. It's for one to four players, ages eight and up, and games generally run about 40 to 115 minutes. Millions of years ago, the planet Valerius was once the jewel of the galaxy, filled with an abundance of resources and home to a grand civilization known for its advanced technology. Suddenly, a massive asteroid slammed into its surface, tearing the planet apart. From this destruction arose a thousand moons, each carrying the shattered remnants of Valerius's golden age. With the promise of new life and the chance to unlock the mysteries of a forgotten civilization, aliens from across the universe flocked to these moons, forming moon colonies. As the colonies continued to evolve and adapt, they developed the technology needed to stabilize the mother planet and harvest Valerius, untapped resources essential for the advancement of their own worlds. This race to the top ignited an epic interstellar war, where each species now fights fiercely to claim the riches and secure their future among the stars. You take on the role of a leader of a moon. You must hire alien mercenaries to extract resources from the planet while engaging in battle with rival moon colonies who also attempt to advance their civilizations. To win, simply be the first player to collect 21 Valerium. The battle rages on, with the fate of the entire galaxy hanging in the balance. Will your civilization survive? So the name of the game here is Valerium, and you'll be getting that from Valerius, which here is in the middle of the board. You'll start with some, which is really nice because not only will you be gathering it, trying to win by getting 21, but you'll also be spending it through the course of the game. So there is a real trade off here in how and when you use it. So the biggest way to get this Valerium is through the use of mission cards. On your mission card, you'll see various things. What resources it requires, how many of that resource, and how many Valerium you will receive. Now you can get half of Valerium as well, which is a Val, and you can make change through the course of the game in order to get the right number of Valerium that you need in order to win, but those are just the currency of the universe, so to say. It is the most sought after resource. So how do you gather these resources from the planet? Well, you're going to create a convoy, and in general, in order to gather those resources, you're going to have to send gatherers out. Now, you have mercenaries as well, and we'll talk about the difference and why you use them, but first, let's just say you're sending your gatherers to go to the planet, and you're very peaceful, and that is very key in this game. What type of political move are you going to make? Are you going to be peaceful? Are you going to be warlike? Or are you going to defend? And we'll talk about the three of those options in a minute, but first, let's just get to resources. You're gonna send your gatherers off to the planet to gather from the different biomes. You've got Astroflora, which is found in the savanna. You've got Plasmophora, which is found in the desert. You've got Ember Pine, which is found in the jungles. And you've got Exostone, which is found in the Arctic. Now, within these biodomes, there are also beasts and artifacts. If you run into a beast, you have to roll your dice against a 12-sided to see if you beat it. And if you don't, you're gonna lose Valerium based on what that card shows. Or if you find an artifact, you have a couple different options here. First, you can choose to just sell it and get two Valerium, which is definitely a key thing to do. Or you may choose to spend one Valerium and gather three resources. But either way, you're gonna be discarding this artifact card. Also, if you happen to win against the beast, I forgot to mention, is the fact that you get to claim two Valerium for the win. So there's definitely a good side to winning against beasts that show up, but there's only one of them within the deck. So the likelihood is low, but never impossible. At the start of the game, you'll have a few resources that you begin with, which you're gonna have Larium and Val, as well as your planet that you're coming from. You have your political cards, and you're gonna be dealt five cards, which will happen at the start of every round from the basic deck. Now, again, inside this basic deck, there are some action cards, which may aid you in battle like Airstrike, but there's a lot of different ones in there. They can do various things. But the main thing you're looking for is the gatherers and you're looking for your mercenaries. So those are the basic versions and there's also elite versions of those which we'll get to. But the basics, you're trying to put together that convoy and decide on politically what you're going to be doing. Are you going to the planet to be peaceful and gather resources? If you are, you're going to use your peace card now. If you do, you get a bonus from doing that. You'll be able to gather one Valerium. But you open yourself up to attack. 
and we'll get to what happens when someone plays war. But if you choose to defend, you have to put up your shields and that costs Valerium. So you have to spend Valerium in order to do that, but no one can attack you, which is really nice. So you might be having an interesting trade-off about spending the Valerium versus gathering it and getting the right resources. But if you choose to go to war and someone else went to war, you're gonna be battling and there's various permutations of that, I should say. So if everyone went to war, you're all gonna be battling and so forth. But if you're the only one, then you get to pick who is vulnerable. Like if there's multiple people who played peace, then you can pick one of them to battle and attack. And attacking is very simple. You're gonna be rolling your dice and adding in your mercenary strength to it. And your opponent will be rolling their dice and comparing values and whoever has the highest value is gonna be the winner. And if you have action cards, don't forget to use them because they can really aid you here, especially with like the airstrike giving you, I think it's a plus three. But then whoever wins that battle will get two Valerium and the loser will have to forfeit two of their resource cards that they've gathered. Now, if there's not enough of any of the resources to be gathered from the other player, then you'll just go to the bank. But still, it is an interesting, I'm gonna take all these things from you. Now, it's not gonna prevent you as a gatherer to go pick up resources on your turn, but the winner of that war is definitely gonna come out on top. So each round of the game is divided into three phases. You kick it off with the preparation phase where you're gonna get five cards and put together your convoy going off to the planet. Are you heavy with mercenaries? Or are you gonna have gatherers? Or are you gonna have a mix? And then you have to pick your diplomacy card. You gotta choose, are you going to war? Are you throwing up a shield? Or are you going to simply be peaceful? And all of this is played face down and then you move to the deployment phase where you'll flip over your diplomacy card showing what you're gonna do. So if you were peaceful, you're gonna gather Valerium. If you threw up a shield, you're gonna spin Valerium. And if you went to war, you're kind of kicking off the round, picking who you're going to battle if everyone else is peaceful, that is. Or if everyone went to war, then it's an all out war back and forth. So you'll be rolling dice and comparing values all across the table. So again, it is that simple with those two rounds, but then you finish things off with development. So the first thing you're doing in this phase is completing your mission or your contract cards. And you're looking for the resources. Do you have enough to complete the card? If you do, then you will discard that card, collecting the appropriate number of Valerium that goes along with it. You'll put it at the bottom of the mission deck. And then you get to draw three mission cards, keeping up to two and discarding the other again to the bottom of the deck. And then we move on to the auction, as long as no one has one with 21 Valerium but the auction for elites, that happens next. Now, depending on the number of players in the game will determine how many of these elite cards get put into play. Again, they're gonna have gatherers as well as having mercenaries that can really obviously aid you in battle if you wanna go to war and steal resources from folks. But you will be bidding on these cards, starting with half of Valerium, so a Val, and moving up from there. And whoever wins gathers the card and spins their Valerium to do so. However, everyone else who was in the bidding war will get their Valerium back, so keep that in mind. And they'll gather that card, which will give them a leg up in the next round. So that covers the basics of what you're doing here. You're creating your convoy, going off to the planet, being peaceful, warlike, or defending yourself to gather resources so you can complete those mission cards and get Valerium. Again, in the end, you hope to be the player that has gathered 21 Valerium first. All right, folks, just a reminder once again, this has been a Dice Tower paid preview and everything you've seen here has been in prototype form. So keep a close eye on the campaign for any changes that still may occur. Now, with that said, you know, it's been an interesting evolution to see where Boss Dog Games has come from to where they are now with Valerius. It's been fun because I started with them on their first game to this, and it's really shown an evolution of how they've developed games and come up with bigger and better and still easy to engage with type games. So this one was really well done. They had some amazing, fun artwork with it, which I really enjoyed. I like the theme here quite a bit. And there is some interesting trade-offs about when to spin Valerium and gather it back and forth. And when to go to war versus being peaceful. You take a lot of chances in this game for doing various things, but you're still gonna be gathering resources. And the core thing is completing your contracts or your mission cards in order to get the maximum number of Valerium. And it does feel like a race. You feel like you're racing against your other players to get the 21 Valerium needed to win the game. But folks, ultimately, if this looks like something of interest to you, I'm sure they'd appreciate your support. So I think that's it for me. And until next time, we'll see you at the table.
everybody, thanks for watching this video. If you like this review or whatever you just watched, wasn't it amazing? Uh, check out our channel, Dice Tower. Uh, we have all kinds of things. We review games, we do top tens, we play games live. It's all about board games, but especially the people who play them. Check out Dice Tower YouTube channel.